Good morning, Keith. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Sorry about the late start. I had a uh, technical difficulty. phones. Okay. All callers are muted. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Come on, let's, let's have some church. Good morning, everyone that's coming in. Good morning. Sorry for the late start. I had a little technical difficulty. Uh, but we're in the house. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Palm Sunday. Happy Palm Sunday. Good morning. Let's make it happen. We're going to wait until everybody gets in. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, everyone. And happy Palm Sunday to you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hopefully you, hopefully, hopefully you engaged in some worship before you came on. I would love to know what worship songs you guys uh, guys used. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, everyone. You guys coming in so quick, I'm just going to generalize my good mornings on uh, this morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, Pastor. Pastor Wilkins, thank you for tuning in. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Yes, happy Palm Sunday to everyone. Come on in. I'm waiting for you. We won't start without you. They're still coming in. They're still coming. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Hopefully you're having a wonderful morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hopefully everyone is safe in the house. Keeping yourself out of harm's way. We know, we know that we're covered in the blood but we still have to be cautious as well. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on in, everyone. Come on in. Good morning, good morning to everyone. Amen. I'm so happy to be able uh, to uh, share the word with you this morning. I, I want to uh, make sure that I put this day and this week in context for you. And so you can understand and be mindful of the significance of uh, this week, starting with today. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I see you. He would not come down. Nobody like you, Lord. Wow. That's all right. That's all right right there. 
nobody like you. Rise and rise, shine, give God the glory. Worship songs coming in. This is the worship song roll call. You should have been in worship prior to logging on. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I look back over my life. All right, Jesus, you are fresh, fresh start worship. <laughs> I like that. Come on in. Come on in. Good morning. Amen. Did you get your worship in? Did you get your worship in? Worship before word. Hosanna, blessed be the rock of my salvation. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you, baby. Christ is the answer for you. I hear you. I won't complain. <laughs> I trust the Lord. Uh, Tina, you're a mess. I love it, though. Like never before. Nobody greater. I'm still here. God knows that's, that's, that's true. And it's by the grace of God. Let the church say amen. Love it. Oh, yeah. I'm running for my life. Don't stop running. Jesus on the main line. Oh, my God, Mom, you took us way back on that one. That's a devotional song. Waymaker. I hear you. I'm still holding on. His grace and mercy brought me through this morning. Let your power fall. Fresh anointing. I hear you. Amen. I won't complain. Yeah, yeah, it's no use. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Oh, one, I'll take Jesus for mine, Elder Taylor. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> he always wins by Anthony Brown. I, I love that. That's good. God is. He still loves me. I got a reason. Lord, help me. I do, too. 99 and a half on do. Praise is what I do. Jesus, you brought me all the way. Boy, y'all messing me up this morning. Lord, help me to hold out until my change come. Great is thy, great is thy faithfulness. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Good morning. Good morning. I believe we are uh, getting ready or we, we can start. I think, I think we got enough in and everybody who's coming in, they can catch up with us. This morning when I rose, I didn't have no doubt. Good. The blood still work. My soul is anchored. Precious Lord, take my hand. Jesus, the offense. Surely Caesar, tear your kingdom down. When I look back over my life, my good days outweigh my bad. I won't complain. I know that's right. You know my name. Hallelujah. Listen while, listen while you still can hear the master's call. Safe in his arms. I've never lost my praise. Jesus is a rock in a weary land. Power belong to God. What a mighty God we serve. Y'all gonna make me start singing in a minute. I'm gonna leave it alone though. Never would have made it. I know that's right. I know that's right. Never would have made it. That's the only reason we're making it right now. That's the only reason we're making it right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for tuning in on this morning. A happy, happy Palm Sunday. Amen. I thank God for every one of you who are tuning in on this morning. I pray that, 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 that God is uh, covering you and keeping you. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm constantly, constantly praying for you. I thank God uh, for who he is to us, even in this time and in this season. I see your song still coming in, Hosanna. We need a move. He touched me. I belong to God. Do it, Lord. He saw the best in me for the good of them that love the Lord. <laughs> he, made, he made it out. I made it out. I'm sorry. I made it out. As long as I got King Jesus, don't need nobody else. Hallelujah. Wow. Wow, 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 what a powerful list of worship songs. And I pray that you enjoy uh, your personal worship with God on this morning. Uh, I pray now that you have uh, your elements. Um, I want everyone to have your elements in front of you because as soon as I finish ministering the word of God, we are going to 
uh, partake in our in-house in-house online communion all right now I, I told you guys yesterday uh, that um, I, I, I just wasn't led to go forward with um, the um, the drive-by uh, palm giveaway and, and, and so uh, just by the direction of the Lord um, I, I canceled that and so uh, but I, I, I want I want to show you something because I got my 2019 palm. I got my 2019. Now I know some of you still holding on to your old palms, your 2019. I got mine right through here. And if you don't have it, I, I, there, there may be an emoji somewhere that you can utilize uh, to, to wave your palm. Anybody got your 2019 palm? I, 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 I see palms uh, in people cars. I mean, long after uh, Palm Sunday and so I got my 2000 somebody made this cross for me I don't know who did it but I want to thank you for doing this and it's amazing that this palm is still in good shape and what I'm telling you what I'm telling you when you're wrapped in the love of God the victory of God I'm telling you you will remain in good shape that's all I want to tell you about this right here that this reminds us uh, that God knows how to keep us in good shape, you see? And so it, I'm, I'm, I'm still, still holding on. They, they're going to, guys, I see that he's got the real palm trees going on, all right? So if you still have yours, let me know. Do you still have it? I see the emojis. I see a couple of people say, you still have yours. I still, I'm still holding on to my 2019 palm. So uh, I, I, obviously, uh, you know, we, I wanted to make sure that I, I valued your safety over symbolism. And we'll talk about this in a moment. Somebody, some people are still saying, I still have mine. That's good. That's good. Somebody said, said, is saying that they have their 2018 palm. These things don't expire, do they? I'm telling you something about this palm. It's built to last, isn't it? All right, over the front door, I still have mine still holding on, there it is. So we, we, you know, we still have our palms. And I didn't want to have to uh, bring you out uh, because it's serious. It's very serious out there. And so uh, we can uh, uh, hold on to our old palms or we're gonna talk about what the symbolism of a palm is all about in a minute. Somebody uh, said that they, They've had their palm uh, for the last uh, seven years. My goodness. Yes, indeed. So this teaches us something. When, when we do get a fresh palm, hold on to it, because you never know when you have to recycle it in Jesus' name or reuse it. Is that all right? All right. All right. Get your Bibles. Now, I want everybody to get your sacraments now, because we're going to go right into our communion once I give you this word. All right, get your Bibles, go to John 12, and I want you to meet me at the 12th verse. And I'm going to read verses 12 through 16. Now, I, you know, I want you to know uh, that this is a great time to really begin Holy Week. Because this is what it is, it's the beginning of Holy Week. And I want to put this week in context. In fact, I want to put this day in context, in context so you can understand how it relates uh, to um, uh, the, the current situation that we're in right now. And I, I, and I begin to think and begin to pray and, and say, God, should I go another way with what you would want me to share with your people this morning? He says, no, I want you to stay right where you are. Stay right where you are because there's some revelation that I want uh, my people uh, to garner and to um, receive and hear and consider given the fact that all this is going on in the midst of one of the most, probably the most primary uh, week uh, that is celebrated uh, by those who are of the Christian faith. Okay, 
So let's see what God wants to, wants to tell us uh, in the midst of what we're going through, given uh, that today is Palm Sunday. We, we're, we're not in the building, but we're still having a church because we are the church of the Lord Jesus. All right. So I'm reading from the Good News Translation, and um, I want you to follow, follow with me. You may have a different version, but we, we're in the same neighborhood. All right. So the Bible says in John 12 through 16, the next day, the large crowd that had come to the Passover festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, praise God. God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. God bless the king of Israel. And 14 says that Jesus found a donkey and rode on it, just as the, as the scripture says. He says, this is what the text says, do not be afraid, city of Zion. Don't be fearful. Here comes your king riding on a young donkey. His disciples did not understand this at the time, but when Jesus had been raised to glory, they remembered that the scripture said this about him and that they had done this for him. All right. I want you to consider the 13th verse. I want you to consider the 13th verse and, and, and the, 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 it says this, it says, so, so they took branches of palm trees, and I want you to get this, and went out to meet him. They went out to meet him. They took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him. That's very significant. I, I, I'm really going to put a lot of emphasis on that part of the text, that they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him. Because there's no use you having a symbol of victory and you don't know how to operate. You don't know how to utilize. You don't know what the next step is as it relates to the victory that you have available for your life. And what a wonderful time to talk about how victorious we are in Jesus Christ, given the time that we are dealing with and the circumstances that we're dealing with right now. So I want to use for a topic, in it to win it. In it to win it. I want, you to, I want you to get that in your spirit. We are, we are talking about in it to win it. Father, I thank you so much for this opportunity to share the word of God. And as I begin to share the word of God, I ask God that you would uh, provide all that you will want me to say to these, your people. I really appreciate uh, this privilege, this honor that you've given me to share to all those who are on our prayer line, to all those who are on Facebook Live just for a moment so they can have some context as it relates to how this day relates to the times we're living in even right now. So God, as I begin to expound on your word, use me mightily for your glory. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, uh, before I move on, if you're here uh, with us for the first time, just type that in the comments, first time, first time, first time. We just like to know if you're here uh, for the first time. How many know that you have to be in it to win it? God does not put you in anything to lose. Whatever we are in, he puts us in it to win it. So I don't know what you're in this morning, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you have the victory. 
you have the victory. You see what we're in right now. We're not in this to lose. We are in it to win it. I like uh, uh, Jennifer uh, Priest uh, and, and how she describes um, this term or this phrase, in it to win it. She, she says that it is a representation of your determination to crush the obstacles that try to stop you from reaching your goals. I really love that. And she says, when, when you say I'm in it uh, to win it, you are giving the enemy notice that come hell or high water, meaning no matter what happens, I'm going to win. I'm going to win. And so when you say I'm in it to win it, you are giving yourself permission to succeed at whatever you set your mind and heart to do. For as a man thinketh in his heart or her heart, so is he or she. I want to share something with you because I want to give you some scripture to kind of verify exactly where I am because I believe, I believe, thank you so much for all our first time vis visitors. If you were in the building, you'd be getting gifts right now. But we want to clap it up. We want to give you some, some, some hand claps right now. Can we give our first-time visitors um, some emoji hand claps? I know I've, I started the message, but I do want to acknowledge our first-time visitors. Amen. Thank you so much for being a part of our in-house online. And we pray uh, that uh, your experience with us will be uplifting, edifying. It will encourage you uh, to go on and see uh, what the end is going to be in Jesus' name. Welcome, welcome, welcome in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for being with us. And so I, I want you to hear this, uh, and, and you can give them the emojis while you're listen because, listening because I, we really value our first-time visitors. Thank you so much for being with us. And so I want to give you scripture. The one thing that I never want to do, I just never want to give you anything without it being verifiable uh, from a scriptorial perspective. And so as we begin uh, to understand what in it to win it means, I want to give you some context uh, from uh, the Holy Writ so you can begin to use scripture to sustain your victory. Because I believe when it comes to victory, Victory is really about what it is uh, that uh, you are able to um, understand from a biblical standpoint and then use that as fuel uh, and motivation to walk in the victory that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has for us. So when you read 1 Corinthians 9, 24 good news it says surely you know that many runners take part in a race but only one of them wins the prize so you have to run then in such a way as to win the prize okay so understand that that we are in a race we are in a spiritual race right now and whatever comes, whatever goes, whatever obstacles we have to deal with, in your mind, you have to understand that I'm not in this race to lose. I am in this race to win. And you have to have a winner's mentality in order to have a winning outcome. You have to have a winner's mentality in order to experience, experience a winning outcome. But this is the thing. And Paul says in Galatians 5, 7, he says, now I want to say something to all your runners. You did run well. All those who uh, started the race and for some reason you got tired, you, you dropped out, you got fatigued. He said you were doing well. You were doing very well. He didn't say what, but he said, who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Because he says, this persuasion cometh not 
of him that calleth you. God says, I, I, I would never call you into anything and persuade you to quit or influence you to give up. So you have to ask yourself, what's hindering me in this season that's compromising my ability to be a winner? Because God is saying, God is saying that once I bring you into something, I bring you into something to win and not be defeated. And it's amazing that when you read the context of the text that I just read in John 12, 12 through 16, I want you to see this uh, because when we look at, matter of fact, let me give you Corinthians I think it's important for me to give you a Corinthians uh, uh, a 15, 57 before I go into the context of our text. Look at where we get the victory. Look at the strategy of our victorious outcomes. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So I want you to hear this. I cannot win without him. You cannot win without him. It's good to get in the race. It, it, it's good uh, to be a part of, of, of what God is doing in the kingdom as it relates to where he's taken us. But if you want to win, you need him. For the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 57, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory. So you don't earn the victory. He gives it to you because of your faith and reliance in him because it's through him we always win, right? So if you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you're not trying to get the victory. You're not pursuing the victory. You already have the victory because he gives it to us because of our faith in him. I want to prove it to you because it's in the context. And I need somebody to get in your mind going forward. Even in the midst of what we're going through, I can't win without him. As long as I have him, I've already won. Because my victory is not in my finances, it's not in my job, it's not, it's not in my job. Thank God for those things. But if I happen to lose those things, I don't lose victory because I lose material things. Because my victory is in Jesus Christ. And having his spirit in me, I'm walking in victory. I'm, listen, I'm walking in victory, right? Wherever you are right now, if you have relationship with Jesus Christ, you have the victory. We don't lose in him. Check his record. He's undefeated. Nothing can defeat him. And if nothing can defeat him, then nothing can defeat us. The only way we can be defeated or hindered if we, if we, cease to obey the truth. That's what Paul says. You lose when you don't obey the truth because losing is not of the persuasion of the one who calls, who called you. So if he called you, he didn't call you to persuade you to quit, give, give up and lose. He says the only way you're going to be hindered if you stop obeying truth. So it's prime time to make sure that your obedience is on point. Because this is the season that you have to obey truth because truth comes to be known because it says you're going to know the truth, but the truth has an assignment. The truth, that's why it's hard for me to listen to anything coming from the White House. I'm being honest with you, and I hate to politicize this message, but I, it's just hard for me to, because you don't know, you, you don't know, you know, what's true you don't know what's real you don't know what's reliable i just at some point i have to just cut it off but i know what i need to do i go to my word and my word tells me that i shall know the truth and anytime that the word speaks to me it's speaking truth to me and the truth shall make me 
free. It will make me free. All right? So, listen, don't lose your freedom in this season. Don't be hindered by fallacious commentary and false uh, falsehoods and, and, and just, 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 you know, unrealistic and intentional uh, deception when you got the truth of God's word that you can rely on. All right. So I, I want you to see proof of this, because in the context of the text that I read, John 12, 12 through 16, we we see Jesus. We see Jesus. We see Jesus. Jesus and Lazarus. We see Jesus and Lazarus in a setting. He's at Jesus is at, with Lazarus. And the Bible says, the Bible says uh, that a large, I mean, verse nine, a large number of people uh, heard that Jesus was in Bethany. So they went there. All these people went there, right? Not only because of Jesus, but they went to see Lazarus uh, as well because it was Jesus who raised a Lazarus from death. Are, are, are you hear me? He raised Lazarus from death. Okay? You have to see this because the Bible says because of that in 10, so the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus too. Because on his account, many Jews were rejecting them and believing in Jesus. Now, can I, can, I, can I say something to you? Lazarus shouldn't be there. Lazarus should be in the grave at that point. But, but because he has the victorious one with him, even death could not defeat him. You know the story. He lay stinking in the grave four days. Uh, but when the victorious one showed up, he gave Lazarus his life back. And I don't know who I'm talking to. And you feel like you have lost your zeal. You have lost your will to live. You, you have lost many things. Let me tell you something. When the victorious one shows up, he will give you your life back. Because I'm telling you, I have a few people on this live and those who are on the prayer call, call a line who knows that you wouldn't be here if he wasn't there. And the only reason you're here is because he was there. In fact, you shouldn't be here but the victorious one wouldn't let you lose. See, when Job went through, he said, you can take everything, but just don't take his life. If you got life, you can bounce back. <laughs> if you got life, you can get all the material things back. But if you don't have life, you don't have anything. And even when it looked like Lazarus was losing, the victorious one stepped up and said, Lazarus, come on back. <laughs> come on back. And I don't know who needs to make a comeback, but I'm telling you, you can make a comeback when you have the victorious one on your side. Are you with me? So how do we see victory in Lazarus's life? It's through revival. Lazarus gets victory through revival. How? The victorious one revived his life again. And I believe that somebody's on, on this line, somebody who's listening to me on the call, that you need revival. You need God to revive your emotions, revive your power, revive your confidence. Whatever has died on you, metaphorically, I'm telling you, the victorious one knows how to resurrect it back to life. So I'm telling you, God knows how to give you your life back. You know why he said, because I came. Uh, that you may have life and life more abundantly 
And that's the reason why Lazarus is alive in the context because the victorious one gave him his life back. Let me tell you something. I don't know what you, I, 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 listen, it doesn't matter what you, what you have lost in this season. The victorious one can give it back to you. So he gets victory through what? Revival. Why? 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 Because it was God. It was Jesus. It was God in flesh whose name is Jesus who gave him the victory through revival. Do I have somebody in here who knows uh, how it feels to be revived? Let me tell you something. There's going to be a whole lot of revival going on after this here. Oh, it's going to be a whole lot of revival <laughs> Oh, it's going to be a whole lot of revival going on. As a matter of fact, there's some revival going on right now. People are reviving their commitment to God and reviving their connection with God because they understand they can't win without him. So Lazarus, he won because what? He had him. You see? And the reason why the, the people wanted to kill him is because he was such, when I say such a manifestation, he was such evidence that if you have the victorious one on your life, he know he knows how to revive your life again. If God can bring somebody back from the dead, he can do absolutely anything. And because of that, people begin to believe in Jesus. So what I'm telling you, what we're going through right now is going to bring people to, to a point of belief. I, I believe that. This thing is going to bring people to a place of belief in Jesus. Master Child, all my businesses, I'm telling you, people are going to believe Jesus as a result of this because they're going to see, they're going to see how victorious they can be when they have relationship with him. I really believe that. I really believe that. And so I want you to see this uh, because they rejected the Jews. They stopped believing in Jesus. And the next day, the next day, a large crowd that had come to the Passover. Wait a minute. What is the Passover? Oh, let me, let me see if I can find some victory in the Passover. The Passover festival. They heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. Wait a minute. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing victory in the Passover now. Let's deal with the Passover. I want you to know what the Passover is all about, right? The original Passover that you will find in the Old Testament is a memorial. This is what this feast is all about, a memorial to God passing over the houses of the children of Israel when he killed, he killed the firstborn of man and beast in Egypt. Israel, would, Israel was living in Egypt when God decided, due to Pharaoh's disobedience, to kill the firstborn uh, of man and beast in Egypt. But the reason why there's a festival, the reason why there's a celebration it's because Lazarus, he's got victory through revival. But Israel got victory through remedy. Because God says, I'm going to come through and I'm going to kill everything. I'm going to kill the firstborn of man and, I'm, and, and a beast. He said, but I'm going to give you a remedy. I'm going to give you the cure. I, I'm going to give you the cure. He said, I want you to kill a lamb. And put the blood of that lamb on your doorposts. Here's your remedy. This is how you don't get infected. This is how you don't die. This is how this thing don't take you out. And when I see it, I'm coming through, but when I see the blood, I'll pass over. So God says, there's some things I've got to get you out of. He had to give, get, get uh, Lazarus out of the grave. But there's some things I'll prevent from happening in your life. He said, if, if, I, if, I, if I have to get you out, I will. He said, but if I have to give you the remedy to keep you out of some things, he says, I'll do that. And I don't know who's listening to me, but God says, I'm ready to give you a remedy. 
Your victory is going to be through the remedy that God gives you. And I'm telling you, the remedy right now for all that's going on, on is the precious blood of Jesus because when he, when he saw the blood in Egypt, he passed over. It, listen, listen, if they were in the right house, connected to the right God, they survived. While everybody was dying around them, they were in the same country, they were in the same nation, they were in the same community. The difference was is that God gave them a remedy. And the remedy was the blood of Jesus. And here they are celebrating the Passover. And I want you to know that you can go ahead and celebrate because I'm decree and declare that you have the remedy. First of all, you have the victorious one on your side, but then he shared blood that you can utilize. I mean, declare it. Decree and declare it. That's your remedy. I mean, blood over your nose, your eyes, any entry point. I wish I had somebody here that this thing can get into. I, I pleaded. Yeah, put your mask on, put your gloves on, but put some blood on it too. You need some blood now. That, that's really your remedy. That's your remedy. We plead the blood over every entry point. If I do happen to touch my face and and I don't want to do that. We don't want to be careless. But I plead the blood that the blood don't catch it before it gets into me. And if it gets into me, I plead blood that the blood will dry it up. I curse it at the root because I have the remedy. So you get victory through revival, victory through remedy. And this is why they are celebrating because they have not forgotten how they made it over. I wish I had somebody on this live, on this call that would say, God, when you bring me out of this, I will never forget how you helped me make it over, how I made it over through storms and sickness and, and all types of disease and illnesses. I will never forget how you helped me make it over because I'm telling you, sickness was a part of this nation before Corona. And he brought you through your illnesses then. And I, I believe that if he can bring Lazarus back from the grave, he can prevent you from coming into contact with something that's trying to compromise your health. That's just the kind of faith I had. Victory through remedy. Somebody say hallelujah. So we got victory through revival, victory through a remedy. Then 13 says they took they took branches of palm and then they went out to meet him. Lord, help me. They took branches, branches of palm. They took this right here. They said, I, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this right here and then, then what I'm going to do because this being in my hand means nothing. If I don't have a relationship with Jesus, the victorious one, this means nothing. It means nothing if you have not met Jesus. I had somebody here. You, 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 listen, you can have a palm and all that is wonderful, but this means nothing if you have not met Jesus. Do I have somebody in here who know that I don't care what you have, it'll never work effectively in your life if you don't meet him. And I want to talk to a few people who know you thank God that you met him. Oh, you met him. It took a while, but you met him. You know, you know, you should have done it a long, a long you should have done it, done it long ago, but you met him. Matter of fact, I'm glad he kept me alive because you got to meet him before you go away from him. Oh yeah, took down the palm and then just say, my faith is in the palm. No, it's, 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 I, I, like, I like the palm because it's a symbolism of victory. But if he's not with me, I can't win without him. So all those who are on this line, uh, um, I, I want to help you meet Jesus. 
if you, if you have never met him, I want you to know that I can help you meet the man. The man who died for you, the man who loved you, the man who bled, suffered, the man who loved you, the man who created you. I don't care what you have. You can have money, you have cars, but none of that matters if you never meet Jesus. They took the palm and they went and they met Jesus. Now, let me tell you, this is how you know that you are in it to win it. This is how you know that you're in it, in it to win it. It's when you realize that you cannot win without Jesus. You cannot win without Jesus. See? See, you, you, you can't sit here and think that meeting Jesus is not important and think that you're going to experience victory. No, no, no. You see? You, you, you have to understand that the only way this here can be effective in my life is through meeting the victorious one. You see, that's what my shout is all about. See, see, people shout, and we love praising God. You're gonna master shout. Can't nobody praise God no better than me. But if you look at the text, so they went. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him. And after they met him, they started shouting. See, I, and, 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 they said, and they said, praise God. See, let me tell you something. You know, I don't get cars every day. I don't get houses every day. I don't get money every day. I don't get checks in the mail and all that stuff. I don't get, but when I think about what was stopping me to meet him, and despite what the enemy was trying to do to make me miss my meeting, I had somebody here. And I finally met this man. See, I need every, I need all everybody that's sitting in my section right through there. I need you to just give me a little room. Because life has never been the same since I met him. And I'm talking to a few people on here. Don't miss your meeting. This ain't nothing but a meeting right here. Oh, this is a meeting right here. See, I can tell if you're in it to win it because if you're in it to win it, you'll take everything you have and you'll understand that none of this means nothing if I haven't met Jesus. And shouting broke out. And the Bible said they start shouting, praise God. Can I tell somebody, if you met God, if you met Jesus, if you met Jesus, if, 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 you, if, you, if, you, if you made your meeting with Jesus, if you connect with Jesus, you can go ahead and praise him. Oh, you didn't have to wait until this is over. <laughs> praise him for the meeting. I wish I had three, two. Looking like bro, bro man for a minute. I wish I had two, two, who would just say, I'm praising God for the meeting. You praising God for the money, I'm praising God for the meeting. You're praising God for the material things, I'm praising God for the meeting. I met him because I want to meet him first. I want to meet him in earth before I meet him in the sky. Hey, somebody, it's going to be a meeting, but you need to meet, you need to, you need to make this meeting while you're in, while you're in the land of the living. It's going to be a, it's going to be a meeting whether you want it or not, but you want to meet here before you meet there. And so the next time you give God praise, praise God, because God allow me to live so I can meet his son. And they start praising God. The, 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 the ones who made the meeting said, praise God. Meaning, meaning, hear me, meaning they are telling you who the praise belonged to. Oh, I'm going to put this down. Let me get on out of here. I'm going to get on off of that. Do anybody in here, is, do I have somebody in here who's not confused as to who the praise belongs to? The pray, All the praise, it belongs to God. All of it. Because I could have died before my meeting. He, look, look, I, listen, I, listen, I, 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 I could have been, you know, unable to do what was necessary to, to, to meet the one that I needed for my eternal security, 
I mean, sin could have took me out. My 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 disobedience could have taken me out. My my mischievousness could have taken. But He allowed me to live, and I praise You for that, God. I praise You. I, matter of fact, let's just I praise You, God, for food on my table. I praise You for all the times I've gone in, in and outside of my house. And as I know right now, I'm 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 good. I praise you, God, that, that it could have been me needing a ventilator. It, it, it could have been my child in a hospital that I couldn't visit. If you're sitting at home and, and you've been reading the news week by week, and so far, so far, none of those things that other people are going through have come now your dwelling, I think we need to take just about Master's Child, if we was at the north or the south, everything in there would have been tore up right now. I praise you. I pray all of it belongs to God because he is worthy of my praise. Right in the midst of what I'm going, he's worthy of my praise. Let me get on past that. Let me, let me get on past that. Let me get on past that. He said, praise God. Praise God. So you can't hear praise God and don't praise him. Praise him. Why? Why? Because you met him. You made the meeting. You met him. You see? And, then, and it goes on to say, God, bless him who comes in the name of the Lord because all our blessings is in the name. All our blessings are in the name of the Lord. And God bless the king of Israel. Do you see? Where I am with this? He says, he says, he says, listen to this. And I'm, 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 I'm done. I'm done. Let me just break this down. Because I, I, just, I just need to break this down. Let me break this down. Why is it significant for you to meet Jesus, the king? First of all, your blessings is linked to the king. Right? Your eternal security linked to the king. Your victory overall. I think all that's synonymous with victory. Your victory is linked to the king. So with Lazarus, victory through what? Revival. Children of Israel, historical, historically, victory through remedy. For these individuals who met Jesus and all of us, it's victory Victory based on him rescuing us. Victory through rescue. Because when you see your king coming, what he's saying is, I'm coming <laughs> to rescue you from the penalty of sin, the power of sin, the influence of sin, disease, illness. I'm, I'm coming to rescue you because when this life is all over, I'm going to go ahead and make sure uh, that I do what is necessary to rescue you from eternal damnation. So do I have a few people who know that, 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 that the reason why you, are, you survived all the things that tried to take you out of here is because your king came and he, he rescued you. For every time he rescued you, he was letting you know you have the victory through him. The only reason we're victorious, the only reason why we have not been defeated is because every time something tried to take us out of here, every time something tried to be a threat to our lives, our king showed up and rescued us. So some of you know what it means to be victorious through rescue. <laughs> He's a rescuer, a lifesaver, a lifeguard. That's what he, drowning in sin, he dived in. He said, I got you, come on up. I got you, I got you. That's why I praise him, because he rescued me. Look at 14. So that, that's what my three points. He rescued Lazarus, Lazarus through revival, children of Israel through remedy. And then those who have met him, you don't even know. He just rescued you. 
you get victory through rescue. So I'm telling you, it's nothing that you're in right now that he can't rescue you out of. I'm telling you, he can rescue you. And then as it goes on, the Bible says in 14 that Jesus found a donkey and rode on it just as the scriptures said. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Everything that pertains to your life is based on what's written. G listen, listen. If, if you are aware of uh, the commentary of scripture, let me tell you something. There's nothing in scripture you can't find in life. Nothing. There's nothing in scripture that you can't find in life. The reason why Jesus found this, uh, this donkey is because it was already written that he would find it. Because scripture would never tell you to look for something that you cannot find. And the reason why we don't find is because we don't see. Doors not open because we don't knock. It's not given because we don't ask. That's the fourth said. Jesus found a donkey and rode on it just as the scripture says. So everything the scripture is saying about your life, I want you to look for it. I want you to ask for it. I want you to knock until those doors are open because God says I would never allow you to read scripture and not allow that scripture to manifest in your life. Now, this was a donkey. This was a donkey. Let me tell you what the, the symbolism of a donkey is. It's peace. Donkey, this donkey, from a symbolism perspective, means peace. Means peace. Keep that in mind. All right? Now, look at this. Look at this. The fact that it's a donkey. A donkey now. Not the smartest you know, beast in the world, but God used it. God used it. Are you with me? So I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. Never underestimate the people God may use to help you get to your destiny. Never underestimate the people that God may use to help you get <laughs> to your destiny. I may not be the brightest, I may not be the best, but God can use me. And matter of fact, the Bible said that Jesus found a donkey and rode on it. And let me say this, and when you get there, and when you get to your destiny, don't forget the people who gave you a ride. Oh, I wish I had somebody here. Don't forget the people who gave you a ride. Because sometimes people get to their destiny and forget it was you that gave them a ride. <laughs> prayed for them, held their hand, helped them through. Wasn't the best, but, 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 but you were assigned to their lives to help them reach their destiny. And, they, they, and you have people who will forget that you gave them a ride. <laughs> God will not forget the things that you have done for him in order for others to reach their destiny. Because sometimes people think you, you know, you're doing it for them. Listen, we do all things that's doing unto the Lord. People may forget, but God will never, ever forget. You see. So, so this, this, let me let me give you this real quickly. I gotta get out of here. So when you see the donkey, I want you to see that. The donkey is a symbol of peace. And I want you to type this. I think this is the first time I'm telling you to type something. I want you to tell everything around you, everything that's irking you, everything that's annoying you, everything that's irritating you. I want you to speak this over your life in a victorious manner, with a victorious attitude. I am, I am, I am going to arrive at my destiny in peace. I don't have nobody here. I'm going to arrive at my destiny in peace. Oh, no, no. I'm not losing my mind over what's happening. I'm not losing my focus. I'm not going to be filled with anxiety. I will arrive 
at my destiny in peace. That's when you know you got the victory, when you're in it to win it, because you're not allowing none of this stuff to drive you crazy. Jesus, I'm going to ride on a donkey to let you know, I know what I'm facing, but I'm going into my destiny in peace. In peace. Peace be still. I speak that right now. Peace be still. You won't, you won't, you won't be frantic. You, no, no, you, 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 no, 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 uh -uh. no, no, you won't be fearful. You won't be scared. You, you won't be anxious. You won't be nervous. You got a destiny. You are, you're running a race. You're running a race. You're in a race. You're in a spiritual race. And I decree to clear that you're going to arrive at your destiny in peace. So he goes on to say 15, don't be afraid. City of Zion, he's talking to you, his people. Here comes your king. <laughs> he, when you see king, you see victory. He's coming. He's, matter of fact, he's here. And he's riding on a young donkey. He's coming in peace. He's bringing victory and he's bringing peace. To make you understand that though he's ready to go into Jerusalem, by Friday, they're going to hang him. He'll be dead. But we're going to get him on up on next Sunday. He'll get up. Oh, he's going to get up. I'm trying to tell you. He'll, by next Sunday, early Sunday morning, I'm going to leave it right there. No, I'm coming in. I'm going to walk right into my destiny. I'm coming in in peace. I'm in peace. He has nails. He has a cross. I mean, people are going to pluck his beard. People are going to strike him. He's going through the, he's going, he's entering in the worst season of his earthly life and he goes in it in peace. Lord help. I'm going to come on off of that. He said, because I'm here to do the will of my father. I'm here to revive. I'm here because I'm the remedy and I'm here to rescue. And if you know that, you have to understand, not only are you in, to, in it to win it, but he's in you to win. He's in it to win it. He's always been in it to win it. Disciples didn't understand it, but when Jesus was raised to glory, they remembered. It's something about giving God glory that helps you remember who God is. They remember the scripture and said this was said about him and that they had done this for him. What am I saying? What am I saying? This, this was about Jesus' victorious entry into Jerusalem. And it denoted that the devil was already defeated. And I need you to say that the devil is already defeated. Corona is already defeated. It's, 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 it's defeated. The devil is already defeated. And the reason why I know that in the text is because Jesus never enters into anything without bringing victory into the circumstance. So when you, when you came into this circumstance, Jesus came right on in it with you. And he never comes into any circumstance without bringing victory into it. So you're not in this, we're not in this circumstance by ourselves. We brought Jesus into this. And if Jesus comes into it, then we brought victory into it. And you can say, victory is mine. I told Satan, go ahead now, get behind me, because victory is already mine. And so when Jesus comes into anything, victory is instantaneous. It's instantaneous. It's instantaneous. That means victory is a foregone conclusion. We Win. And you know what it reveals to us? It reveals to us that he is our only means of experiencing an authentic, victorious life because he always causes us to win. Father, I thank you for this time that we have shared in your word. We are in this to win it. We thank you, God, because we know now that our, our victory is in your son, Jesus Christ. 
and everything that we have entered in that have been a challenge for us, even this season that we're in, we, we, we brought Jesus in this with us. And wherever Jesus is, victory, victory exists. So God, we don't wait until the battle is over. We're shouting right now. We're giving you praise right now. We are blessed right now. We are blessed right now because we know that we have victory in your son, Jesus Christ. And for the rest of our lives, as we run this race, our mentalities will be that we are in it to win it. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless every last one of you all. I pray that you were blessed by the word. Listen here. Listen. Listen to me. If there's anyone uh, that needs to be saved, you need, uh, God said, I'm setting up a meeting. I'm taking, he said, I'm, I, I got you on my schedule. I got, I got you on my schedule. I need to meet with you. If you're not saved, Jesus is saying right now, I need to meet with you. We need a meeting. You can call 301 2001615. Listen, this is the thing. Or just say on, on your comments, I, I need to be saved. I promise you. I promise you, we'll, we'll get you to we'll, we'll, we'll get you to meet it. Oh yeah, we'll get you to meet it. Not only that, not only that, if you want to be a part of this ministry, if you want to be a part of this ministry, you can be a part of this ministry right now. That's right, MCC, we're in it to win it. We don't lose, not because of the name of our church. It's because of the name of our God. It's a strong tower, right? Just run in, and we are just victoriously saved. So if you need a meeting, we can set that up for you right now. Confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. You in. You in. So type it in the, 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 the comments and my team would be uh, uh, very, very um, um, interested in hooking up with you or you can call 301-200-1615. We'll, we'll set up the meeting. <laughs> we'll set up the meeting in Jesus' name. Is that all right? Offering time in the sanctuary, let's give. Let's give, let's give. Those who can give, you can give. You can give right where you are, you can give. Hey, Kim. You can give long time. If you want to, you can give. If you're able, you can give. If you can't, don't worry about it. Givelify. We have Cash App. Givelify mobile app. We have Cash App. That's uh, dollar sign Master's Child. Electronic giving. You can call 301-200-1615. Church website. Online giving. You can go there. Or you can mail your seat in at P.O. Box uh, 7810 Upper Marlboro. Uh, Maryland 20772. Stay tuned. We still have communion. I haven't forgotten. All right. All right. Anybody, anybody, anybody who wants to be saved, if you want to be a part of this ministry, just type it in the con com comments and we'll make sure we, we get with you. Or you can call 301 200 1615. All right. So, all those who want to give, you can give now. Father, I thank you so much for our giving. I thank you so much for what you have provided us to be a blessing to uh, the kingdom of God. And as we give, God, we give because we know we have victory. We didn't buy victory. We can't earn victory. It's by your grace that your son would even want to reside in us so we can live victorious lives. So, God, the least we can do is be obedient. We give the tithe. We give the offering. If we have it, God, those who don't have it, God, bless them, God. Sustain them. Allow them to never experience lack. I want them to be victorious by way of the things uh, that you're going to supply them to sustain them through this season. Those who have lost jobs, God, God, don't let them lose hope. Don't, those who have lost income, don't let them lose hope. Because, God, we know that you're able, even in the midst of their losses, to, losses, to allow them to be victorious and not defeated. Even from an economical perspective, perspective some way, somehow, God, you'll come through. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so you can give at this time. All right. Make sure you have your sacraments. We are all praising. Yeah, I am too, mother. I'm thank you. I'm praising God. Anyhow.
Somebody say hallelujah. All right. Everybody get your seed in. Get your seed in. We get ready. Let's see. Hallelujah. Let's do it. I want everybody to give, and if you haven't, you can just give once we uh, finish communion, all right? But I, I, I wanted to bless your giving in Jesus' name, all right? Now, everybody gather your family, get your sacraments around you. You should, if you have grape juice, if you have pineapple juice, if you have, it doesn't matter, water. We're going to concentrate, concentrate it, consecrate it, and then we are consecrated unto the Lord, and whatever it is, I believe God, God would accept it, given where we are right now uh, in, in the times uh, that, that has caused us to be limited in our expression, expressions from a traditional perspective uh, by way of communion, all right? So get what you have, get your family, and, and we're ready to go into communion, all right? All right, let's pray. Oh, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us for all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in newness of life to the honor and glory of of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord let everyone say amen all right so I got me a cracker here y'all don't know about the crackers we used to use uh, crackers back in the day it'll work all right we have, we have consecrated this sacrament unto the Lord all right so I'm getting ready to begin hopefully everyone uh, you're ready all right here we go. On the same night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it, gave thanks, blessed it, and said, this is my body, which has been broken for you. As often as you do this and partake of it, you do show forth my death till I come. Take ye and eat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. Good. On the same night, that Jesus was betrayed, he took the fruit of the vine, gave thanks, blessed it, and said, this is my blood, which has been shared for the New Testament. As often as you do this, you do this in remembrance of me and show forth my death till I come. Take ye and drink. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God. I feel, the, I feel the presence of God in those sacraments. I pray that, that these sacraments would be a, 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 a healing for your body, for your soul, and for your mind. I, 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 I pray that whatever uh, choice of, of drink uh, you just consume that 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 the blood got on over into it. That the blood just just got over into it. Hallelujah! Through consecration and supplying you with what you need in your body right now. 
things that you don't even know is happening. I, I believe, I believe that the blood is interceding, interceding for our efforts and our, for our efforts, just, just making an effort to make sure that we honor Jesus. This is about doing this in remembrance of him. This is saying, God, even in the midst of this crisis, we have not forgotten your son, Jesus Christ, because he is the reason why we're living victorious lives in Jesus name. All right, everybody good. That was good. That was good. That was good. Everybody good. I love every last one of you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Listen, MCC visitors stay in. Stay in. Stay in. Look, look, I got up this woman say this to you. Uh, you know, you know I love DC. DC, you you my people. But I cannot believe what I saw down at that wall. You, for real, I just cannot believe the amount of people that were down at that wall. Uh, you know, we know the wall. If you, if you don't know what the wall is, the wharf is, then you're not from the DM. We, 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 we forgive you. That's almost synonymous with the big chair. You got, you understand what I'm saying? I could not believe what I saw. I just sat there and I said, for. You got the, what for some crabs, crabs and I mean, what? What? What are we? You know what I'm saying? What are we like? What's going on? You, you know what I'm saying? So, so this is the thing, right? This is the thing, Master Child. That, that's one of the reasons why I kind of, you know, I, I, I said we we don't have to come out, you know, just to pick up some palms. We we your know, safety is more important than symbolism and. Hopefully I broke it down to you so you understand that this right here means nothing if you if you haven't had a meeting. If you haven't had a meeting, this don't mean nothing. <laughs> this means nothing, you see. So so be safe, but look, be smart. Don't get me wrong, we gotta go out, you know. And I listen, I need I need somebody to hook me up with a mask. Anybody who's listening to your spiritual father, mail me a mask. Do something for me, because I need. I, 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 you know, I don't want to go out here now one more time. Somebody who lives close to me, let's meet at somewhere, the bank, the, the somewhere, meet with John, I'll meet you wherever. I need a mask. Because I cannot go in another grocery store. But these people out here, that just, that wharf just messed me up. That wharf, I said, boy, it looks like summertime in D.C., didn't it? It looks like just your regular summertime in D.C. Everybody, like, they, they don't know nothing about Corona. Like, Corona what? I said, man, come on, Dad. Come on. You got to be kidding. Alexa, you got me? That's, that's what's up. I, I, I'll be, because I, I, I know you live close to me. Oh, that, uh, well, and you already know. All right, so that's cool. I'm good. I got, I got, my, I got my, my, my mask and... Uh, and listen, Alexa, if you can bring me, if we can, you know, I hate to be greedy, but a few gloves wouldn't, uh, wouldn't hurt either. All right? Listen, no crabs, no shrimp, no... Master Child, if I turn that TV and see anybody from the child down there, I'm going to call you personally and just start rebuking you in Jesus' name. <laughs> Don't do that. Stay away from these crowds. Just serious out here. Oh, yeah, I'm good. I got the N90. Oh, I'm, oh Alexa, you, that's all right right there. Oh, that's all right right there. That's all right right there. If I turn on that TV and see anybody from the child, I'm, I'm telling you, you're going to get a call from me. Wait a minute. Somebody just said a cashier in Largo, uh, in Largo died. Are you saying that the cashier worked at Giant? We got to pray. I'm praying. I'm going to pray before I get off. I, I'm so sorry to hear that. Man, I'm so sorry to hear that. Cheryl, we praying for you. Taking two buses to work eight hours. My goodness, this is just, this thing got, it's got to pass. Wash off all items you buy from the store. Absolutely. John said he got a case of gloves. You say you have a case of gloves all sizes. I, I need all that. I need all that. I can't go out here bare. I'm telling you, I, I can't do it no more. I went out to get my iPad. Y'all got on me so bad. 
and I and, and I deserved it because you cannot be out here without no gloves and no mask. Uh, pray for DC. I, Sandra, I got you. I got you. So what's the what's? Are you seeing a lot of passengers? I assume not. You have extra gloves. That's good. I knew. I, I listen. The one thing I do know is MCC got my back. One thousand. One thousand. Bishop, I can take people to work. That's fine. So Carolyn said, if you need if you need a ride. Uh, Cheryl, hook up with um, your sister, uh, Carolyn. She says she got your back. Be careful with the gloves. Don't cross contaminate. That's right. That's right. So there's a way you got. Hey, this, this is just too. It's, I, you know what? You just might. As, you just might as well stay in the house, cause you got to take off the gloves a certain way, and then you know, and throw them away. So you're right. So you won't cross contaminate. This is crazy. Have to go offline with it. Okay, I got you, Sandra. I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. All right. Don't put your phone to your face. You can't put your earpiece. Oh, use your earpiece. Don't put your. Hey, listen, y'all may want to, you know, uh, check out these comments because we're getting some good advice from from some of the people uh, that knows how to uh, help you maneuver and facilitate through all this uh, this stuff we're going through right now. When you finish, throw it away. Pray for my cousin Bob. Okay, I got you. I gotta pray. I will pray. Tina says she can be. She she got you on the transportation situation. So Cheryl, you can hook up with. Uh, look at this. Look at MCC. So look, we got we got to help in, amongst our church family. So Alexis says, if any seniors need groceries or household items, I'm willing to shop. Listen, shop and drop off tomorrow. Now, I'm, I'm 52. Am I a senior? Wish I had some money. Don't worry about it. I'm just playing. I'll go get mine. <laughs> it's all good. Wipe out your car where you sit groceries. God, oh, I didn't. I'm not even thinking. Of, I'm honestly, this is good stuff because I didn't even think about that. I didn't think about it. You got to wash off everything. So do, do you guys have Lysol? And I can't find no Lysol, no wipes. I can't find anything. I mean, it's just, I can't find anything. Let's continue to keep my eyes. And I got you, Cindy. I'm, I'm going to pray before I get off. I'm just kicking it with you all right now. I mean, but this is some good information. Tina said, for the mothers, we, we, we got transportation for the mothers. Master Child, you guys are just awesome. I will send a star car to anyone. Wow. Tanya says she'll send a star car. Uh, I guess a smart car to anyone. I guess that's what it is, smart car. Bless you too, sir. You got to wear glasses. I had to wear my glasses out. Wash your clothes as soon as you come. Lord have mercy. I'm going to have to take notes. Now I got to clean my steering wheel. Tony, I'm going to pray. I got you. God, really. Lysol is in Costco's. We're getting a lot of information here. You got a wife? God, boy, I didn't know how much, um, how, how much we had resource-wise within our, our, the MCC community. Leave your shoes at the door. You can't, I can't come in with the shoes? Oh, we messed up in here. Oh my, why do you guys didn't tell me this? I know I didn't walk in here with, 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 <laughs> without taking my shoes off. Really? My goodness. Please stop shopping unless you have to. You heard. Okay, so no, you're right. So you don't just shop to be shopping. I was doing that in the beginning because I just thought I just needed to shop every five minutes for some reason. I just felt like I, was just, I didn't have enough and had all this stuff and just didn't feel like uh, I had enough. Yeah, Roger, Deacon, we're going to pray, no doubt. No doubt, we're gonna pray. So the air's polluted, it's just bad outside, basically. Okay, I got you, I got you. Master's child, these are things we should be doing. Yeah, no, you're right, you 100%. I mean, really, that's why I said, you know, coming out to get a palm, it's just for me, no, I, I just couldn't do that. I just couldn't, I couldn't do it. So I think we're safe where we are, come out when you need, pay attention to all the recommendations and we'll be saved. And most of all, we're covered with the blood of Jesus. 
And so I'm going to pray um, at this point uh, because I believe what he did for Lazarus, what he did for the children of Israel, what he did for those who made the meeting, he'll do, do it for us. But we still have to be wise in Jesus' name. Spray shoes. Lord have mercy. I got a lot. I'm telling you, I'm failing. When I, when I tell you, I done failed all of what you guys are saying. Just about. My goodness, I got to get on it. All right, let's pray. Father, I thank you. I, I've seen the requests of family members who have contracted this disease, the, 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 this, the, the, the worker at Giant that unfortunately lost her life. Those who have mentioned to myself and the pastoral staff of loved ones who have contracted the disease, God, we, we've been talking about you for the last hour or so as it relates to what we have in your son because of our connection with him. We, we, we go to him. He, he stands between ourselves and you. He is the intercessor. And God, we ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God, that as we begin to pray, for every last individual that's on this live and those who are not, I pray for this whole nation. I pray for this whole world that, that, that God, you would show yourself strong for the righteous sake, for the righteous sake. As we pray to you, God, and you hear us, God, we pray that you will heal this land, comfort the loved ones of those who have lost family members, those who are sick in the hospital, Comfort the emotions of those who want to go visit their loved ones and not permitted to do so. God, I pray for every thoughtful individual on this live that's a part of MCC and, and other churches that are, are willing to provide resources to help those who may have a need in this season. God, we know you as a healer and we know that you can do anything but fail. So, God, I ask, God, that you allow your healing virtue to move powerfully in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ on the behalf of everyone, every name that has been mentioned on this live. All the names and all the people that we hear about on CNN and MSNBC, on the news locally and God, we pray for those, indiv those individuals. We don't know all of them, but you know them. And God, we know that there's nothing too hard for you. God, I curse Corona. I curse the disease at the root. And God, I pray that it goes back where it came from and never, ever return again. I come against contamination, whether it be in our cars, in our bedrooms, on our floors, on our hands. God, give us what we need to practice cleanliness. But God, for every spot we may miss, God, we ask that you intercede and don't allow none of those things to come nigh our dwelling. I don't want it to come nigh our children, our our loved ones, our eyes, our nose, our mouths, our ears. We we, we, we believe, God, that, that you can cover us to that extent. So, God, I cry out to you this morning, this, this afternoon. I cry out to you that we need you. We admit that we cannot win this without you. And we're claiming victory because the devil is already defeated. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I love you all. And um, I thank you so much. Uh, for your continual commitment in terms of what you're giving and know that uh, I really appreciate you. I, I'll see you on Tuesday. This is Holy Week. This is the beginning of Holy Week. And uh, Friday, Friday night, Friday night, um, based on the leave of the Lord, I, you may hear from me for Good Friday. You may hear from me for about 15, maybe 20, 30 minutes. You may hear from me, okay? Um, and then Saturday, we'll have our, our um, walk in the newness. And then Resurrection Sunday. Invite everybody you can to be a part of that, uh, that, that in-house online gathering. All right, I love you all. You guys mean so much to me. Thank you for your care, your concerns. Thank you for your uh, benevolence towards each other. That's what I'm talking about, Master Child. We're a family. Let's look after each other. 
So if you need something, contact your, contact, contact your travel pastor. If you heard the names of people who would provide transportation resources, I didn't, I, I, you guys are just amazing, simply amazing. I love you.